There we are. Hello. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. I'm Craig Nolan. Thanks for joining us. I'm Inga Middleton. Thank you for joining us. And we have, uh, as you may have noticed, a uh, couple of key personnel folks missing here, but hopefully they'll be back sometime <laughs> before too long. So this, Hi, here we go. You. This is our... Uh, she was our second show in December, is that right? I'm yeah. losing track. Uh, the, the last of the Burr months for 2019 is upon <laughs> us, and boy, it sure feels like it's a pretty chilly uh, day out there. It's so I uh, hope you're bearing up under the cold and uh, staying warm and snugly. Here we go with our, uh, our lineup, usual uh, suspects in here, our news and community bulletin board. Our EBG segment tonight uh, is being uh, replaced by a commentary, so stay tuned for that. CBB, Community Bulletin Board, as they may or may have not have mentioned. Our theater reviewer, Denise Pringle, is here, and she's uh, giving us her thoughts on Singing in the Rain tonight, our News for Seniors segment, and then a roll-in from our Styrofoam mom, Miriam Gennari, and she's talking with Ellis. Oh, Ms. Ellis, Andrea Ellis. So stay tuned for that. That's all coming all right. your way on this edition this of Don media. Hammond's Arlington <laughs> Weekly News. But first, Thanks. here's a social media reminder from uh, Inga. And you can watch us on Arlington Weekly News at the, on YouTube at uh, Arlington Weekly News and the number one. And you'll also on Facebook.com, Arlington Weekly News. And you can hear us on 96.7 FM, WERA. That's it. Yes, Thank sir. You. We're, the audio from our little show is also on WERA, 96.7 LPFM. Check us out. Here we go, the first of our news items. Well, a truck caught fire in Pentagon City at around 11 a.m. on Monday, December 9. The fire was promptly extinguished, but Hayes Street was temporarily closed between Army Navy Drive and 12th Street South. The fire caused a small explosion, which occurred as a video was being taken of the fire. And a caller heard on the video was believed to be notifying a 911 dispatcher because the video shows that the fire caused the explosion rather than being caused by the explosion, a vehicle bombing was not suspected. The exact cause of the fire is not known at this time. Inga. Thank you, Craig. The Starbucks coffee shop in the Lee Harrison Shopping Center closed at 10 a.m. on Monday, December 9th. The physical location of the closing store was 2441 North Harrison Street. Those who are sorry to see it go can take comfort in the announced opening of another Starbucks coffee shop on Thursday, December 19th at 5515 Lee Highway, a mere two blocks away. Meanwhile, coffee lovers can walk across the street to another Starbucks location within the Safeway store itself at 2500 North Harrison Street. Craig? Fear not, Starbucks <laughs> is closed, but not for long. Also in our news items, Metro has announced the results of a study concerning increasing the capacity of the rail system. A number of ideas have been offered, some of which would have a significant effect on Arlington residents. One of the suggestions was the construction of a second Roslyn Metro station with a new section of the Silver Line. One possibility would be to have the new line run westward along Columbia Pike. This might please those who missed the implementation of the previously proposed streetcar system along that route. Another suggestion would have the new Silver Line running further north towards McLean. The southern route would bring an economic boost to a lower income section of the county, while the northern route would improve services for those attending the original Marymount University. The plan is expected to be years away from actual implementation, so don't get too excited about that. <laughs> Inga. Okay, W and L High School has held their is holding their annual winter bazaar last. I'm sorry, they held their last their annual winter bazaar last Saturday, December seventh. The event was very well attended and offered a wide variety of items and snacks which were provided by members of the many school clubs who participated. Live choral music was provided by the WNL Madrigals as, as it is every year. All right, that's it for our news items and we'll be back with CBB 
right after uh, a little green commentary. Check it out. <laughs> this week, Easy Being Green is being replaced by commentary. Recently, we have reported on a lot of nice-sounding stories about Arlington's commitment to a greener, more eco-conscious future. These reports are sometimes the results of press releases, and while they may be factually accurate, some aspects of these stories deserve closer examination. First, let's consider the recent announcement by the County Board of their plan for Arlington to become carbon neutral by the year 2050. The goal sounds good, but the time frame is very distant. Where will the current county board members be in 2050, over 30 years from now? The unfortunate truth is that they have made a promise that other people will have to try to keep. We should press our county board for current or next year achievements that can be assessed while board members remain accountable for their success or failure. The other story was about Amazon's plan to make their new buildings LEED Platinum Certified. While it is true that the Platinum Certification is better than nothing, it is also true that the buildings are set to exceed the normal density rates. What does increased density mean? It means more human beings living in the same limited amount of space using more of a finite amount of natural resources, especially water, and generating the waste that human beings in a modern society make. The myth that Arlington can grow vertically is impotent against the reality that more people will place a greater strain on our limited resources. Even in specially designed buildings, more people will eat more food, own more clothing, drink more liquids, use more water for washing and bathing, discard more obsolete or worn-out possessions, and consume more oxygen. Amazon's plan to bring in thousands of jobs more than are needed to ensure full employment will saturate the area. Some people might not have any problems with the concept of Arlington turning into a kind of Manhattan on the Potomac. I would encourage those people to go and actually walk around Manhattan, all of Manhattan, including the parts that the postcards don't show, and give Arlington's future some serious thought. Adele Quo will return next week with a much more cheerful installment of It's Easy Being Green. It's easy being green. All right. Thanks, F. It, it is easy being green. Just, uh, sure just try is. it. <laughs> you might learn something new about being green. Thanks, F. Here we go. That's right. Okay. Moving right along. Here we go. Very nice. With our CBB Community Bulletin Board file. And number item number one about gingerbread houses. That's always popular this time of year. And uh, it's one of the most popular winter activities. And your whole family can take part in this event. Supplies will be provided for participants to create their own graham cracker gingerbread houses. Yummy. Supplies are limited, so advanced registration uh, is required for this one. Give them a call for advanced uh, information. This is coming up on Wednesday, December 18, from 7 to 8 in the evening at Westover Branch Library. They're located at 1644 North McKinley Road, and they will be in room number 3. You can register online or find out more about it by giving them a call at this number. It's on your screen now and in your ear. 703-228-0527. Inga. Sounds like a cute activity. Thank you, Craig. When winter temperatures get low, we need to think of a way to stay warm. Thankfully, we have lots of methods of beating the cold, including layering clothing and space heaters. Humans aren't the only ones who have adapted to sur surviving harsh weather conditions. Many animals have their own survival techniques as well, and they are more advanced than you might expect. This event for adults takes a deep look into what wild animals do to survive the cold. 
This is happening on Thursday, December 19th from 8 to 9 p.m. at Gulf Branch Nature Center Park and Park, 3608 North Military Road. Advance registration is required. Register online or by calling 703-228-4747. And Craig. All right, Inga. And also in our CBB file, still need to do some last minute holiday shopping. Last minute. Time to start. Any day now. Find that perfect gift and support local businesses at the Last Chance Holiday Bazaar. Local businesses and artisans will be offering plenty of unique products, ranging from imported home goods to handmade scarves and chocolates. Local animal rescue group Homeward Trails will also be selling gifts for pets and collecting donations of coats for dogs. All of this is coming up on Saturday, December 21st from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Lion Village Community House. They're located at 1920 North Highland Street. Stop out and check out, stop in and check out the Last Chance Holiday Bazaar. Inga. Thank you, Craig. Christmas isn't the only holiday coming up this winter. December 22nd marks the beginning of Hanukkah. This event, which features ice skating, a free raffle, kosher meals, and a lighting of a giant six-foot menorah, is a great way to kick off your holiday celebrations. Skate rental is included with admission, while food is separate. Join in the festivities on Sunday, December 22nd from 6 to 8.30 p.m. at Pentagon Row Outdoor Skating Rink, 1201 South Joyce Street. Register online or by calling 703-820-2770. Thanks to Jordan Kucharski for this week's CBB Stories. All right, you bet. Thanks, Jordan. And don't go away. News for Seniors is coming your way right after we hear from Denise, our theater reviewer, and her thoughts on Singing in the Rain. Here's Denise. Thank you. Only Theater Center is serving up a big dose of nostalgia to satisfy your holiday cravings. Many people consider Singing in the Rain to be the greatest movie musical of all time. And Only has gone all out to present a stage version that stands up to the most rigorous comparisons. The book of the musical focuses on the struggles of a, movie, of a movie studio in the late 1920s to make the transition from silent movies to the talkies. They hope to transform their silent leads into talking stars, not knowing the challenges that the leading lady's grating voice could impose upon them. Marco Santana returns to Olney to direct and is joined by choreographer Grady McLeod Bowman and music director Angie Benson. They work with a remarkable cast that captures the high spirits of the cinematic original. The film starred a trio of iconic talents who are instantly recognizable. Rhett Gooter takes on the huge responsibility of playing the leading man, Don Lockwood, originally played by Gene Kelly. Gooder says that he is a great fan of Kelly and that he loves the opportunity to pay homage to him. Gooder has not only the talents to sing and dance the role, he also has the necessary charisma. Filling in for Donald O'Connor in the role of Cosmo Brown is Jacob Scott Tischler, who has nailed the comic timing needed by his best buddy role. Amanda Castro is Kathy Selden, made famous by Debbie Reynolds. She offers her own version of the fresh-faced chorus girl who hopes for singular success and captures the heart of the leading man with no effort. These three leads make the roles their own, never having to emulate the original players to deliver satisfying performances. The role of Lena Lamont is played by Pharrell Parker, who exudes sensuality and beauty until she speaks. No doubt the question on every audience member's mind must have been, how will they capture the rain? Very convincingly, Rhett Goder dances a joyful solo in the rain, made possible by a rake stage and non-slip shoes. Singing in the Rain plays at Olney through January 5th. See it and tap your toes to Good Morning and the other memorable tunes 
and leave with the image of the talented trio in their yellow slickers and umbrellas, brightening your wintry day. I'm Denise Pringle. Now back to the news desk. Oh. All right, thanks, Denise. We appreciate your thoughts on the deer hunter. Nope, wrong. Take two, singing in the rain. We were talking about the deer. Why were we talking about the deer hunter? I don't know. Anyway, singing in the rain. Thanks, Denise. We're back on track here now. Here we go, as promised. Off, news for seniors. News for seniors and <laughs> classes in place. And away we go. The Langston Brown Encore Chorale is joining other local encore chorales to present a holiday concert. The hour-long program of classic favorites is perfect for the entire family to enjoy, and it is FRAA free. This year, the concert takes place on Friday, December 20, 0 from 7.30 to 8.30 at Wakefield High School. They're located at 1325 South Dinwoody Street. No tickets required, but to find out more about it, Give them a call at the number on your screen. Here we go, 703-228-4878. Inga. Thank you, Craig. A new activity at the Lee 55 Plus Center has been attracting attention. It's a drumming circle, which gives folks an opportunity for self-expression in an engaging group experience. Research shows other benefits, including reduced stress, and improved motor, fine motor skills. The group meets on Tuesdays from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Lee 55 Plus Center located at 5722 Lee Highway. For more information, call 703-228-0555. And Craig. I could do that. <laughs> but not while I'm reading. <laughs> Here we go with another one of our News for Seniors items. The Office of 55 Plus Programs is seeking biking leaders for a congenial group of riders who want to ride together throughout Arlington. The leaders would participate on a rotating basis. Uh, there are many trails conducive to cycling and the 55 Plus office can assist, but they need volunteer help. If you're interested, please uh, give them a call and uh, talk to Allison Cheek. Here's the number. Jot it down, 703-228-4756, or you can ask for Linda Bernstein at 703-228-4771. Get out there and go biking, Inga. Thank you, Craig. Safe and reliable transportation is a key aspect of seniors staying independent. Arlington has several options for ride-sharing services using modern technology. Brett Sanders of Assisting Hands Home Care will be demonstrating how to use these services. That's coming up on Wednesday, December 18th at 1.30 p.m. at the Aurora Hills 55 Plus Center located at 735 18th Street South. To register, call 703-228-5722. And thanks to Judy Masabni for this week's thanks, Senior Judy. Stories. We appreciate it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> News for Seniors motor. complete. We'll be back with uh, sign off and bye bye. You can try it too. It's really easy. <laughs> After we hear from our Staverphone mom and her guest, Andrea Ellis. Here's Miriam. Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Sustainable Scoop. Joining me today is Andrea Ellis. She used to be the outreach and training specialist here at Arlington Independent Media, but now she lives in Kansas City and she teaches digital literacy and media at the library. Correct. Thanks so <laughs> much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. This, this movement about the library becoming an innovation and information hub, that's really the cornerstone of the work that you're doing in Kansas City, isn't it? Absolutely. Tell the libraries are the places where you get people from every walks of life, and all of them are needing access to digital tools. And so we're able to provide that from the littlest voices to, to senior citizens. 
What's really exciting, I think, now, too, is that young people are coming in so desperate to be involved on some level or another with technology, and they're using multiple platforms. And there's a special program in Absolutely. Kansas City that you guys offer. Can you tell me about that? Sure. We have what we call the Kansas City Digital Media Lab. It is a maker creation space for 12 to 18-year-olds, so they can do everything from 3D printing and design to video production to coding, all of it. Where do you get the money for all of that? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. We wrote a lot of grants. Okay. <laughs> yes. And so students come after school. Yes. And what is the kind of philosophy or how do you attract young people to the library? Well, you know what's interesting is that they were coming because it's a space that is a safe space, is generally welcoming adults there, right? We have librarians who are focused on teens and so they're welcoming. Um, and so then what happens is we create programming based on where they're at, right? We're like, we know that this is a need for you. We know you're coming into the library. How do we help take your experience in the library to the next level? And that's where the Digital Media Lab came into play. Now, a lot of young people are using different types of software and platforms in school. So Absolutely. they have a basic understanding. But what you're doing is basically crossing platforms and integrating the stuff that they already know with the emerging technologies. Yes, and, and we're also challenging them to think differently about how they are utilizing the media that they're using, right? So what we know for sure, and what a lot of people say is that they're digital natives. We know that, they, they know how to access it, and they know how to manipulate it. But oftentimes where we're finding challenges is the, the critical thinking aspect around it. How do you not just consume it, but how do you think critically about what, you're, what you are consuming and how you produce something original? I think a lot of parents are, and, and, and educators are asking how you present that in such a way that doesn't make it look like you're trying to limit their access. But, but really, it is about finding reliable sources, and the library has always been a place where you can get the facts, right? Well, that's true. They, I love that <laughs> plug. Um, and also, I think one of the differences is because it's, it's a drop-in space, right? There's no, you, they don't have to be there. And the reason why they often come is because there's access to resources, there's access to food often, and then there's access to trusted adults. And so a lot of what we're able to give them is based on those relationships. So we create a space and an environment where we say you're valued and you want to do this really interesting thing on the internet and we've gotten a chance to get to know you. Now we're going to tell you how you can think differently about what you're doing, how do you protect yourself, or how do you challenge yourself to go to the next level. And what's also very interesting, I think you touched on the point, they don't have to be there. Absolutely. Trying to attract young people to a place where they can gather and socialize and maybe laugh and cut up a little bit, it's hard to find without paying the price of a cup of coffee or a hamburger. Absolutely. So, Because we have created environments that have been, that are really challenging for teenagers, right? We've closed down as adults we've made decisions to reduce the places where they can hang. And that's definitely true in Kansas City, but I know that that's happening across the nation. And so they're finding it harder and harder at this time of their life where social is the most important thing, being social and being with their friends. And so when you have these kind of third spaces like libraries where it's there, there's not a charge to be there, you get to be able to be yourself, it really opens the door for opportunity for them as well as for the adults that might want to have a positive impact in their lives. And everyone feels comfortable because they're all welcome there. In many cities, it is the hub, Absolutely. the center of the community. Do you feel like we as Americans truly value our library system? You know what? I think more and more, yes. You know, I, I, you know, there are a few people who think that it's obsolete because everything is on the internet, but if you actually go into a community, I mean, the research is showing that people are saying, if my, if my library was not here, it would negatively impact my community. So I think that people are recognizing that it is the place where anybody of any socioeconomic or racial background is welcome, and it allows for that interaction and conversation with people who are different than you because you're just in this space together. What's remarkable, I understand that people are starting businesses, there's little entrepreneur workshops, and there's career development. Absolutely. So libraries are growing into the maker innovation space of the future. And for people 
like myself, uh -huh. that really, because I didn't grow up with technology, I'm no tech nomad, it's really a place to learn what digital literacy is across multiple platforms. Because Absolutely. librarians are happy to answer questions. Absolutely. I love that. And it gives you a chance to kind of play, test, see what works for you, what doesn't, and then you can try something new. So if people want to find out more about digital literacy and find resources, what would you recommend? I have a couple websites. The first one is Frank W. Baker com, which is the Media Literacy Clearinghouse. You also have um, commonsensemedia.org and you have name.net, which is the National Association of Media Literacy Education. Fantastic. And of course, the American Association of Librarians has a wonderful website Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you so much, Andrea, for coming back to visit us here in Arlington. We're gonna, we, we definitely miss you, but it's wonderful that you were able to take those skills and then translate them to an entire library system. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. And I want to thank all of you for watching this edition of The Sustainable Scoop. We have so much to be proud of here at Arlington Independent Media. Um, so I guess that's it for me now. Back to the news desk. Shasta. No, that's in California. Chester, that's Northern California. Yeah. Oh, that's, never mind. Now we're talking about <laughs> Northern California. Thanks, <laughs> Mama G. Miriam Gennari and another installment of her Sustainable Scoop talking with Andrea Ellison. I think they were talking about media literacy, which we could all use a little bit more of. But uh, anyway, thanks. Miriam and Andrea, who yes. used to be, uh, used to work right here. Right. Well, not on this news desk, but used to work at AIM. <laughs> okay, so uh, I had information that we were spot on as far as timing is concerned. That may have just blown that out of the water here with this little conversation. But anything else to add before we go? Inga, we've got to wrap up and get good. out of here. Almost you think we're good? Almost on our way to we're Christmas. Good? All right. Days ahead. I'm going to come to one of your yoga classes. I think <laughs> I should try it sometime. Come I could use by. a little yoga. <laughs> so we've got a pack it up and move it on down the road. So thanks for watching this edition of Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. Next week, if you're out there, we'll be here, we hope, and we'll mm -hmm. do it all again. Have a safe week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.